Hey guys, welcome back to the Pits to Podium channel. You know, in this video, Somil and I are going to talk about something that's really interesting, which is, uh, you know, the 20, F1 2020 driver ratings that have been, you know, released by Codemasters. Now, usually ratings are meant to create a controversy. Okay. But to me, Somil, these are absolute downright bizarre. What do you think? It's, it's actually quite strange, to be honest, when you look at some of the ratings. Say, for instance, the likes of when you've got Alex Albon having the same, same rating as Lance Stroll. I mean, Alex Albon is a guy who's achieved quite a fair bit in his young career in Formula 1. He's got to Red Bull and he's rated just the same as Lance Stroll. It just kind of puzzles me a little bit. And that's not where it ends. If you take a look at this, Valtteri Bottas has got an awareness rating of 99 has, a, has greater awareness, apparently, than Lewis Hamilton, a four-time, I think, well, not even a four-time, what, a five, six-time world champion now. So, yeah. You know, F1 has had such a long break, we've forgotten just how many titles Lewis <laughs> exactly. has won. Exactly. But, you know, exactly. it, it's, it's strange because Albin's score is also lesser than the two Toro Rosso drivers. Although, to, oh, me, yeah. to me, that seems pretty fair because that's how Red Bull operates, you know. They always end up putting <laughs> somebody in the second seat, which you don't expect to, you know, see the driver there. But uh, I think, you know, Botas is 99 is probably down to some sort of academic research, which says that, you know, people from the Nordic countries are most aware. So, okay, what do we do? Just give Botas a really high awareness rating because you technically can't pitch him at a higher rating, uh, you know, in any of the other parameters when you pitch him against uh, Lewis Hamilton. So they said, what yeah. do we do? Awareness, 99, you know, it can't get better than that. <laughs> no, exactly, that is what it seems was, like. If that was true, uh, you know, even Kimi should have had a 99, but, you know, uh, that's for another day. Maybe Kimi's awareness in other things in Formula 1 is, you know, <laughs> 99. <laughs> or perhaps the awareness has gone down with age. But regardless of whatever that is, it's just a bit too confusing. Now, normally, as Kunal, you rightly mentioned, when you create ratings like this, it's to try and create a controversy. But it's just... Uh, it's just beyond my understanding. So, uh, how, how is it that well, uh, Simon Ocon, I mean, the new driver at Renault, he just came back from a year's long hiatus. He has a greater racecraft than Bottas, and his racecraft is just as good as Danny Ricciardo. It, it's just a bit too confusing, isn't it? it? It is. And, you know, here we're talking of Danny Ricciardo as one of the best drivers to, you know, win exactly. a world championship, the guy who took you know, Max Verstappen to, uh, you know, head on and stuff. And it's a little surprising to see that rating. And, you know, uh, to, to me, it's, it's uh, even Ricardo and Ocon are at 90 each when it comes to racecraft. And, you know, come to think of it, Ocon was out of a Formula One car, you know, for, for the good measure of 12, 16, 18 months now. So I'm not sure how, you know, the ratings have been put in place. I'm pretty certain that at some point F1 will put out this long, uh, you know, formula of how they reached a rating. Because if you guys remember, that's what they did for the, the tire usage statistics, you know, last year, which, which were also fairly controversial, which Pirelli said they had no idea about as well. Because yeah. if we also look at the table and, you know, Somil and I made some notes before uh, doing this video so that, you know, we, we actually had our laugh before and during this video. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Nicholas Latifi, you know, he has put his, he has been put as cost to hire at some 2 million or something. But, you know, frankly, from what I know, if you hire a Latifi, he brings money to the team. So, hey, why exactly. is it a cost? To <laughs> it, it should be negative. So when you get a Latifi, you get sponsorship from Lavaza and a couple of others. But, yeah, the strangeness doesn't end there. Because if you watch Drive to Survive, you know for a fact that the series portrays Kevin Magnussen to be a far greater and a far superior driver than Romain Grosjean. I mean, he's someone who makes less mistakes. He's a bit less moody than Roman as well. And in, in, in the general opinion, he's much better. That's, that's what the people think. But not, not the guys at Codemasters. Because over here, Kevin Magnussen has a rating of 78, which is lower than Lance Stroll, Alex Albon, and crucially, Roman Grosjean as well. What's going on here? I, I, I was just scratching my head looking at that. Because Kevin Magnussen, he's such a firm, such a strong driver, doesn't really make any mistakes. He's a very dependable character. And he has a rating low than Lance Stroll and Romain Grosjean, both of whom are notoriously moody. So, how does that work, Kunal? Uh, how does that go on about? You know, they must have probably just hired someone to write random numbers. That's how it eventually <laughs> seems. But, you know, I'm, I'm still going to go back to Nicolas Latifi because we know of his pay driver status. Again, there's nothing wrong in that. You know, a Formula <laughs> One since the 
ages have had paid drivers, but it seems Nicholas Latifi did not pay F1 2020 and Code Masters to get his rating. <laughs> Spot they, on. Yeah, what they have done is every rating that they needed a lowest point on, they've just put Latifi out there and they're like, exactly. experience, yeah, Latifi's at 32 and then, uh, you know, something to do with awareness, he's he's pretty low as well and, and you know, they it's just strange. Uh, I honestly have no idea why they've done exactly. this. Exactly. And I, I understand from a marketing point of view why they've sort of not released the McLaren driver ratings yet. Okay. But if anything, I'm just waiting for those ratings from a humor point of view, not from a serious driver rating point of view. No, exactly. I mean, that's not something that you can depend highly on. And another driver who just hasn't been spared at all in this rating is Antonio Giovinazzi. If you look at his card, he's got a rating of 73, experience 47, race craft only 73 and awareness of 70 and a, and a half decent pace of 79. So Codemasters are doing some guys a lot of favor like Bottas, but the other guys are not being spared at all. Yeah. And, you know, Codemasters would have probably realized that, okay, you know, Ferrari has overlooked Gio Vinazzi for 2021. So maybe we can just give him whatever rating <laughs> we want. Nobody's going to really care about it. So it is a little unfortunate. I mean, we are having a lot of fun about these uh, driver ratings, not about the drivers per se. But, you know, hopefully there is some math out there or guys, at the end of the day, this video is just for laughs. Yeah, exactly. But just coming back to the point, Kunal, we've seen the ones, the most outrageous ratings of all of them. But which one, according to you, is the most apt? The one you feel when you look at the, you know, what they've actually nailed that down. And they actually deserve to be called code masters instead of code, well, code blunders or something like that. <laughs> I think the Alpha Tauri rating was pretty spot on, okay, because... They said both drivers have been eventually rated equally. I think, uh, uh, you know, Kimi Raikkonen's was a little spot on as well. Okay. But the thing is, there are just so many blunders that maybe, you know, the, the ones that I have said were spot on were, were lesser blunders to, you know, to be yeah. honest. And that's why they made the cut for me. But what about you? Uh, I think the race crafting, when they've nailed it down at Max Verstappen in 94, if I'm not mistaken, that, that is a good idea. And he's just one point higher than uh, Lewis Hamilton, which I think is a fair representation of what's going on. Not to say that Lewis is a bad driver, but you just kind of have an idea that Max, with his ability to put his elbows out a bit more, I think they've nailed that one down correctly. But hopefully they don't make one for commentators, otherwise they'll have one for Martin Blunder or something like that <laughs> later on. But guys, thanks so much for this, uh, you know, sharing the laughs with us. If you guys have any, you know, weird ratings that you all want to share or anything weird, you all found out about these F1 2020 driver ratings, write to us and we'll see you at another video. Thank you. See you guys. Bye-bye.